Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Meta HSC Valorant. I'm Digital. Joining me tonight is Potato Fries. And now, let's see. Tonight, it is about week nine, I think. And uh, we week have... Eight. Eight, week eight. Week eight. Sorry, sorry. So I stand good. corrected. Week eight. And tonight, we are going to have Blacktown Boys versus Manly Selective Campus. And yeah, the map rotation this week. Best of ones, as always, it will be Haven. And of course, Meta HSC Valorant is sponsored by Opsis and Torrens University Australia. Should be an interesting matchup for these ones here. Now, as I said, it's very close brackets overall. The score lines, you know, bottom to top is barely any game's difference. And it's quite big brackets overall. But this one, um, for the seeding wise, looks like we got Blacktown on the seventh seed. And of course, MSC on 14th with a difference of one. So one, yeah. long, one win against one loss going on from that one there. So it should be very interesting. Um, from that one overall but without further ado let's go ahead and jump straight on into the action here which should be on this rotation none other than haven this mm. week so jump into that agent select all right so uh, haven as you guys all have known in the past uh, in, in the past games i've casted for you guys it's a really attack sided map i've said that a lot of times especially when casting with the reinhardt and on the attack tonight it will be manly selective campus who i will call msc from now on just to make things a little bit easier and yeah, easy. Blacktown MSC boys. versus Blacktown. Blacktown. Yeah, yeah. Blacktown, should be pretty good. They're, they're, that's easy to say. But also, on the same time, right? Uh, look, Blacktown boys, they are on defense. So, the best thing is, they can actually maybe get five, four rounds on defense, and then just come back on the attack. It, it, but then again, it always comes down to the um, the agent co compositions. But now for uh, MSC, they have Rayner and they have Omen. To me, this screams comfort picks. Nothing really uh, meta about this. No, nah, it's um pretty much going on from those ones there. It's always good to have a self healer on Haven. You just l make them lurk, get out some early duels. But mm. the double for Phoenix and Reyna, I mean, if they're gone for first half of advantage, go for it. But the second half, they're relying on uh, retakes and counter flashes, and it's yeah. you know it only works for so long from that one there. So it'd be great for Intel. So maybe they could just try and headhunt off of it. But mm. defense looks a little bit more modern, a bit more classical. Server so scans, you know, jet fill smokes. Killjoys, of course, are just standard. Um, Ash is really good for offense takes. You can do pre-smokes, and as well as the stalling, you can just get the vortexes, and Phoenix is just great for lurking. So, a little more classical, and otherwise, seems like um, you got MSC here trying to be playing for that first half advantage. So, I think really, Black Tap Boys just trying to, you know, stall as many rounds as they can. If they get five on the board, they're looking very comfortable in the second half. Um, up against, you know, MSC are really going to be struggling trying to hold the sights and see where they go from that one there, but... For now, yeah, Haven offense sided. You have to keep going on from that one to make sure you can get all the mo mo momentum out of it. Excuse me. Yeah, like, honestly, I really do like a black down them having the uh, jet pick as opposed to Reyna because Reyna, she's okay, but it, in, in like a more official team based environment, I don't think she shines in it as much. But Jet, being the, the space maker and also very self sufficient duelist, taking space and clearing uh, angles for, for, for your team as you aggress onto the site, I think she probably provides more value, at least for black down. But then again, they're starting off on defense. So I'm hoping they can put uh, the Killjoy Util to great use and make the rotations fast. Already the defense is looking strong. Killjoy set up over towards C and the Sova A long about to dart through. Jet backing up over from A sewers. Should be an interesting firefight and going on early towards A, just trying to get a bit of control. Oh dear. Darts already there. They missed the timing. They just stared there for a quick second, but now they know the back of A, they're gonna instantly rotate and look at this. Phoenix already up and poised. It's gonna be a bloodbath here. Yeah, well, alas, good one right click. And misses the second, though. At least good for one. That's okay, but not really pushing him. Okay, they finally take him down. Alas, the one and done. And, oh, dearie me. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. One of your two duelists and perhaps a curveballs on the uh, Phoenix pushed up and lost his life early on for a one-on-one -on -one trade. You got some intel, but remember, this map is attack-sided. Thankfully, though, the attackers they are starting to push over towards C. Killjoy turret spots them out over towards the garage. And it's a bit of a firefight here, but Zli, he does escape with his life. There's the jet movement we're talking about. Curveballs come through. And a bit of a body block here. Just a little of mass chaos, but Jeffrey's on the C side defending. Three kills, three kills for him, and Zli cleans up. Wow, Blacktown boys, they lost the Phoenix early, early on, but overall, reasonably flawless round. Very comfortable indeed, and can't really be complaining about that one. Um, it seems like they, you know, they had that one quick pick, um, and they were pretty much reading instantly with the A scan. They got the flank through, and then the trade came straight away from them. So, 
um, of course, on the MSC side. And the fact that they, you know, didn't literally just run straight through Garage to get Mentor going, I don't know what triggered them to stall. Maybe the Killjoy was a bit of the fear factor and they didn't want to walk into the util, but... You know, you can just have that one going on bit by bit, but early days, 1-0, they're going to go for an interesting buy. Timbo's with the uh, the hero gun to see if he can't make some impact, and see what happens with the C-side, but they're walking into the oh, util yeah. stack. Oh, dearie me. Yep, spike there's the uh, spike down C. as well on the first carrier, plus now C-log, it's, it's a bit of a kill box. They have a few uh, a four spies to, to play with, but then again... The rest of his team, it's a half eco, so it's a really scrappy buy coming into this. And Blacktown boys, they've already had the advantage now in this round. Damage has been done, so I'm not really too sure what MSC can really make out of this. Some damage at the best, maybe save the guns, but then again, what's the real point here? No charges it's left. not much impact, you're just seeing where you can go from this one, but spike in their hand, Asher Smokes are just stalling, and can easily cut off one of that angle for, I think, to the end of time, pretty much, or at least, like, 15 seconds left to go in the round. And look at this, the flank already is there from Jet, so mm. they just completely pins it in here. They're just going to have to try and see if they can't get some guns away. Oh, Good pick from Timbo's, did manage to pay off with the Spectre, so there's something, but... Can they really run it to another side? No, they have to try and fight for that spike in 30 seconds. It's going to be really dire here. So Garrett split seems to be the play and just trying to, you know, disconnect them from holding that one angle. Well, Duncan's gone now. Allows holding it down. Garage takes down to Timbo. Two players left on the attack. Oh, the, okay, Allows look the other way. Just a big daddy boy expecting a flash, maybe. Confirms the kill. And now Vortex 1v4, no guns to work with, and and, and honestly, left. if you can't do damage, just go, just go lose your life, because you don't want to be saving a ghost into the next round when the rest of your team can buy up. You want that loss bonus, that death bonus as well. Okay, time's up, and I'm a little bit concerned for the economy of MSC coming to this round, because as you can see here, Vortex, he saved the ghost, and looking at the economy, yeah, he can't really buy, but it's going to be a scrappy buy regardless for MSC. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Timbo actually getting that quick pick match, keep it going along. Um, I don't have a Vortex as a combi, didn't quite see it the last second, but I imagine another Force by a last second decision made it happen. Um, the Ghost could help overall, um, and maybe just a bit more util. Trying to see where they go from it, but a couple of Phantoms and a Vandal should be enough to get momentum, especially up against the Spectre lineups and one Phantom. But... They're just going to see how well they go back towards A. Again, walk into that scan. They really need to make sure they get that one on par. But they're gunning up towards A long. So this could be good impact here to get out onto the the side. But they really have to bait out as much usual as they can. Okay, good crossfire. Jeffrey dashes away. Jet mobility once again. The instant repositioning advantage. Timbo, maybe the one to aggress once again. Pushes on blindly. Okay, one for one trades. And it's a bit of a blood buff on side here. But Yazzer is still unknown inside the smoke. Peeks out, gets that kill. A second will be the, the, the cherry on top. Vortex looking the wrong way, and somehow Yaz has gone uncontested. Quadra as he locks down the A site. Oh, dearie me. That was a bit of a bonus round for Blacktown boys, and they escaped with murder and rifles. Yeah, that was very interesting towards the last second there. Um, I probably at that point, once you saw the Astro Smoke, just keep it going through. Um, as soon as Rainer gets caught up, you have to try and get the trade, then you have to keep the momentum going. You're pushing on the site, you make sure you push. But for now, stuck on that one there, down three rounds and gone for the yeah, the half buy here where they've got a little bit more money left um into the yep. last, so they can hopefully buy up those um full phantoms and vandals into the last one there, and they should have a bit more momentum into this game. But still early and Still just oh, trying wow. to find oh, their wow. footing in what they're doing. But oh, oh, he saw the barrel, but now Vortex is there to try and help his teammate. One for one trade. Allows, well, similar to the bit, to the pistol round. He's the one to aggress, and he goes down as well. Now, I, I want to mention them as well. He has the runner back, which won't be able to be used now. But Z, Astro Util, great good, good gravity well. Has already done damage to Oscars as well. Timbo's might, be, might have to chime in and do some damage. Oh, Z, just holding inside the angle. He is trapped in there, though. But he has a crossfire set from his teammate, Jeffrey, over, over from mid, going on a little bit of pinch here. And Jeffrey gets that final kill. A quadra. Blackdown boys, they are on a roll right now. Indeed they are. That's two 4Ks within the first four rounds. Absolutely stopping through and getting lots of early economy and bonuses built up. Now, of course, it is their time to shine for MSC. Another full buy has been gifted to them. So to make that one work and see what they can have from it. Uh, I was interesting from Timbo's there, you know, trying to sink up those fights a little bit dire. Went for the swing on Garage. From that corner there, they probably didn't know you were in that corner, so you could probably hold that angle, get the pick on the mid flank, and then try and re-aggress using vulnerability back towards mid. 
Um, because then you can try and reposition for another 1v1. But let's see if they can't scan. Oh, oh, again, well, they yeah. really need to make sure they can shoot that scan. Because as soon as Sova gets that intel, Jet or someone pushing up mid is already on the flank. And yep. pincering them in. But right now, Yazu, he, he has to go huge for his team and basically hold down the side. Okay, that flame ball was actually helping out in his favor. I take it back. He gets crossfired. And now, eight sides completely been taken. There's a gen on the flank, though. But the turret does expose Jeffrey's uh, positioning. He has to land the headshot. Oh, it's a bit of a dicey there. He does Whoa. keep. It was a one and done. But now, the run back has been popped. And it's a little bit of a bloodbath. Allows Mac to work onto the side. A single curveball one takes head down head. Duncan. And the rest of his team, they all chime in. The spike wasn't even down potato and black down. This is steamrolling over MSC on the A site. Man, this is just insane stuff from them. That one, extra one map difference seems to be having a big impact overall, but they had that one down the back. They got the early picks. They spotted the flank. Um, they got yep. the trade on it. They had the site and they just stomped through with those ults and those flashes. So I think they were all really like in the open angles trying to take the 1v1 going, okay, they're flashing. A fight. The second flash came through, and then, you know, they were just pretty much all blinded from it. So I think you're really trying to play, you know, get on the site, realize under heaven's clear, and then keep going on from there to see if you can't try and get post plan towards sewer, towards back oh, of yeah. a main, and then you can try and fight for those counter flashes. But Alaus, again, pushing through garage, quick pick. See you later, and now, an advantage. And oh, another one as well. Hopefully, this all can find something. Oh, Yaza, I think he got pinged maybe by either a few bullets or. Uh the ultimates, but never mind, Alas is there to back up. Duncan gets taken out. Now, there's only two players left for MSC. They've lost their smoker, and this is a huge hailstorm of, of players and bodies coming down to see long. Ooh. Danny Boy does spray just right down one, but Alas good on the trade. Vortex with the Ares. Yeah, he missed the shot, and Zlee was already there to back him up. I really like how Blacked Out Boys, they are playing the buddy system. And plus, you know, I just want to mention that early on, uh, the economy for MSC, when they sort of forced in that second round, it was a snowball effect because they haven't been able to get a steady economy going. And when they do have a buy to come up, they just lose that round. So overall, six to nothing thus far. They have ultimates, though, coming to this. Yeah, so first four rounds, you can arguably get away with overall to try and bring it back. You know, you bring back eight rounds in a row, that's eight to four. Six in a row, and they just keep on rolling from it. They really seem to be having a very good grasp on this game overall. Mm -hmm. And MSC, just trying to root for them to get some rounds on the board to give us a good show from Not that the one. Not Odin. Good flank from oh. that, spotted out. So easy self-heal, and now they can try and push on towards A. This could be their opening they need. Yeah, but I think he really overly, uh, over aggressed there because Killjoy shines the most when she can play off her Util, but Jeffrey's already there inside the smoke, gets one. A little bit of miscoms from uh, oh, MSC no. there. Jeffrey escapes with murder, and they, they've lost fight control again. Swaps out the rival, Duncan by himself, and Blackdown boys, oh my goodness. They are just not letting MSC get anything. No, they aren't. They are absolutely savage at it. Jeff now on 10 and 4, and allows close 9 and 2. Everyone else got very big mobs across the board, but of course, mainly trying to see how well MSC can get a little bit of a grasp onto this game. They do have that first half um, advantage, if you call those, those two flashes ready to burst out, but they just don't manage to get the picks with them. Timbo's three and seven, Oscar's two and seven. They're yeah. just trying to see if they can't work it here, but they're just not quite reading into their defaults because they're doing a whole lot of over-aggressive plays here for Blacktown, and they're getting away with them. Like, this a two, a 3k from Alaus pushing yeah. up towards Garage, and unfortunately was smoked off from Reyna. They can't get away with that. Quadra! Okay, he knows where the last fight is, and now he's pretty, uh, he's on track for the Yates, and this is once again very punishing for MSC. The curveball! Oh, but no, he oh. it's in Timber. We'll shut him down. Timber, the last player standing, and yes, Valorant, you have wall penetration abilities on all the guns there, and Jeffrey played that advantage to his uh, favor. Okay, now the thing is, MSC, they have ultimates, but they aren't playing a nice default, and they aren't trading outs. It's constant pressure being applied by Alaus over towards mid, and either he gets a kill or he gets intel for his team early on. Yazer as well, earlier rounds over towards A, the recon arrow, it tells them where the players are, and that instantly causes the defenders to rotate or push aggressively. This is what high-tier teams really do, especially Order in the past, right? When, when they're on defense, they always push aggressively and see if the attacking team can take the pressure. If they can, okay, no worries. We'll play standard stock defense, but if they can't, we keep pushing, and we keep getting the kills. Easy win. Once again, same story. Alaus and Jeffrey. Run it back to the top now. Oh, Alaus on the roll again. And he spots Jeffrey's the shoulder. 
The Danny Boy does punish Jeffrey for pushing a little bit too far, but Zli and everyone else, they're all chiming in. Yazzer closes out the C sites. Nine to nothing so far, I gotta say. This game's going pretty fast. It is going very quickly indeed. Um, if they don't get these last three rounds, it'll probably be done and dusted for this one here for MSC, because that'll be a very small chance from that one. But just currently, they're just not really reading to these defaults and playing off each other. Like, if they're going, again, aggressively mid, why not just hold spawn? They have to use all their util to try and take a window and counter flash from there. Yep. And if you hear that, if you know they're pushing garage, take a little shot towards mid, make the garage person peek, and then you peek from spawn cover to see if you can't try and make that one happen there. But now they're having some interesting strats here. Oh, yeah. They are Ooh. in spawn. Do a little bit of uh, exercise, warm, warm up the uh, thighs, you know, before you do strenuous exercise. It's always a good habit to get into. And now, off the go, they're sprinting around to sites. And it's a bit of a curveball as well, because they've conditioned MSC to, uh, to expect that push every single time towards mid. And look at that, they have U-Tool mm -hmm. set up, they killed your turret as well, but that's what's, that, that's not what's happening this round. Blacktown boys, they made the round to B, albeit a little bit slowly. Oh. Oscars, oh, looks the wrong way for a second, Jeffrey punishes. Hunter Spirit to come through, and Zli, really confident with himself now, does manage to trade out Jeffrey, who ran in there as the human flashbang of sorts. Allows once again cleans up double digits 10 to nothing. 10 0, oh, and they are keep on rolling through. Even chilled in spawn for a little bit to see where they go from that round and just conditioning them, just make them think they are pushing aggressively. And of course, this round they are going to be pushing aggressively. So that means MSC are either going to go even more defensive back towards their spawn or back towards A main and see where they go, or otherwise just trying to gun towards whichever site they can, but another oh. interesting strat here, stacking towards the A site, and looks like they're going to be running quickly to get all that info. Okay, I can maybe assume that Blackdown boys, they're trying to make a read right now, expecting uh, MSC to go for a Hail Mary push up towards A, and yep, stiff aggression once again from the defense. Danny boy pops the Hunter's Fury though, but Jeffrey just dodging it expertly. Okay, finally he does get tagged, but guns out in the nick of time, takes down Jeffrey, but his teammates are falling. Finally a trade back, 2v3. Getting a little bit close, making it a 3v1 now as Danny Boy runs out of ammo. No way to run as Lee caps him in the head. 11 to nothing. It's so far Last very flawless for Blacktown Boys. Yeah, it is looking that way. 11 0, one round away from the flawless half and two away from the flawless game. And mm. otherwise, MSC uh, must be good at this point, trying to see if you can't find any momentum. But you know, seems to be Danny and Tim really seem to be doing quite a fair bit. Um, managed to read a fair few of these plays, but I don't know if it's miscommunication, I don't know if it's going through all sorts, and not too sure what they're doing, but they need to try and lock down this last round here of the first half and hopefully win the pistol into the next to have something for it, but see what they can go there. there oh yeah, that really good arrow. Spam. Oh, yeah, the, the Ewokan it really bounced into a, a bit of a weird spot here. Don't get you got to cancel, oh. man! As he just dives right oh, into the I'm into sorry. the defender spawn into a hailstorm of bullets. Oscar's panicking a little Spike bit as down, Lee mid. takes him down thus far. Looking to be a flawless round for Blackdown boys. As Lee still applying pressure over towards mid. But however, the Reina is a bit of a, a distraction here. Trying to reclaim the spike at the very least. While well, Vortex and Danny, they work their way through B and onto the C sites. Timbo finally takes down Zli. Spike is back into their control. 4v3, however, but they don't, the they don't really have a lot of ultimates to play with. Jeffrey. Timbo's okay, catch out. Grabbing the anybody. healing home. Timbo's, I don't really think he was in position, or perhaps he didn't realize. Now he will go. grab the heal as Jeffrey feeds himself to Timbo's. But Timbo's, him against the world. Plus, there's a Kiljo lockdown. This is a little bit of a stiff uh, attempt, but don't go for the knife. He's gonna go! Oh, He's gonna go no. him! Oh my god! The butter knife? Joy? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh no. Well, uh, you love to see it, you hate to see it. Well done, though. Very sneaky play up on the logs. Flawless half, you called it. Yeah, we've gotta clear that angle there almost all the time. Someone will be camping on logs for those quick picks or back towards default side. But 12-0. Manly Selective are one round away from defeat, and otherwise, of course, Blacktown are one round away from the win, and it's all on the line here for this pistol. See what they can make it happen. They do have the defense, so it gives them something to try and get for the retakes, but if they don't realize they're going to be going fast here towards a site, or at the very least, gain these quick picks when they do swing wide, because Currently, all they got now is Blacktown that are absolutely stomping through, swinging every single angle. So if they live a good pre-fire, they get that pick and then reposition, but... hide towards cover, and see so where they go. But by looks at it, some more interesting straps are developing here as they're um, huddling again to yep, sort yep. of what is happening with this Team team. Strap.
All right, boys, look, we all invested $800 into Sheriffs, and we don't have any utility to play with. So we can just go play this, but Vortex pushing over towards A-Long. Oh, my God, he gets capped instantly. He had a chance there to go for a play, but just a slight hesitation, I think. Finally, Blackdown, they're choosing the time to strike. Danny takes down one, and damage has been done. This is punishing. They're really gambling on the Sheriff buy, but look, no utility, not much heals on everyone else, but they are getting the kills. That's what counts. 4, uh, 4v3 now, the man advantage, and Jeffrey just dives right in there, headshots Oscars, chasing up Danny Boy, finally he gets taken down, Spike will go, will go down over towards B, but the Sheriffs, they do so much damage, and now MSC, they have to land flawless headshots. They would indeed, so 2v3, they haven't quite planted yet, I don't know if they want the upgrades of the Sheriffs or something Last else, but they're running on through. Oh, yeah. And then the opening, it's all on that one. As Lee catches up Duncan, Danny Boy with another one. Down to the 3k. He's going for the BM. Oh and no, he's going to bring out the knives. They're trying to see what can happen with the knife fight, but they win it anyways. As Lee gets the last one. 13-0 as Blacktown boys go undefeated in any rounds against Manly. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty flawless round, I have to say. Uh, not flawless round. Um... They struck down Zli. Sorry, that was what I was just trying to say towards the very end there. And uh, look, there's not really much I can say about this. 13 uh, they had most it's, of those ones, yeah. It's as clean as it gets, really. And on the scoreboard, what is there to, to really break down? I guess for me, uh, Alaus, he was a really good performer here because um he was always applying pressure on the defense especially out towards garage in which a lot of phoenixes tend to play there always either curveballs out or plays it dry and he always applies pressure and more often than not he does actually get damage or a few kills immediately falling back and once again him doing it all the time and being successful it conditioned msc eventually to throw down util but they adapted a little bit too late and by then i think the game was a little bit too far gone yeah, Danny Boy and Timbo's really, they had a pretty good sense of what they were playing. I managed to get a few picks of those ones, but most of the time they were just trying to quarter their teams. A fair few miscommunication, I would imagine, from those early defaults. And mm. I think it was like six rounds in a row before they could shoot those server dart there. So probably need a little bit more team crack and just coordinating each other from that one there. And see what they go overall, but yeah, GG's, of course, to Blacktown. They win the 13-0 and yep. look at that extra win under their belts. So. And also the, the MVP of this game, mm. I, I talked about them earlier, it has to be a Laos, you know. Despite mm, the top definitely. fragging, that was one thing. Five first bloods, that's another thing. But once again, it was just the conditioning, the, the aggressiveness being Phoenix on the defense for Blacktown. It gave, really gave them the early round advantages, the damage and the kills. So yeah, that's uh, all I can really say about this game. 13-0, nice and flawless for Blacktown boys. Well done. And this should basically uh, pad their stats a little bit to move them further up into the uh, the leaderboards. Well, it guys. Will, uh, indeed. Yeah, sorry. Uh, now back to us. Potato, any last words from you? Yeah, no. GG's all around from that one. Blacktown, we happy about that. Keep on going through. Mm. And otherwise, yeah, definitely a last MVP. Kep kept on putting them on their toes. Keep on getting like, you know, one or two kills easily within those rounds. And then... That to try and hold that angle while someone else will come up and then take his yep. position to get another firefight from there. But of course, GG's and easily from those ones there. So, of course, we'll have to have a little break between that one. It was a little bit of a quick match, but yep. don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be having at 6 p.m., which would be Dare La Salle College, um, up against Base High School. So that should be a very saucy match indeed. Yep, exactly. And guys, thank you very much. Well, as uh, Patel said earlier, we'll, it's a short break. Once again, you're watching Meta HSC Valorant. I'm Digital, and of course, joining me is Potato Fries, sponsored by Optus and Torrens University Australia. Thank you.